Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to be talking about the Xeris Pharmaceuticals XERS guidance summary from the 8th of January 2024. And in the summary, we're going to be looking at the guidance they just put out. We're going to be looking at the bullish and the bearish parts of the company. So I generally follow small cap pharma. I do some video games. I do a little bit of everything. So if you like what I'm doing, hey, please like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And thank you. Our disclaimer is I do own shares in the company. I'm an amateur investor and any advice given should be followed up by your own due diligence and any information given is valid for today, the 8th of January, and the slideshow will not be updated. As we get new news, new slideshows. Great. Okay, so what happened? To start the new year, Xeris re uh, released a PR about its 2020, 2023 outlook and recap. Uh, the company expects to be cash flow positive in quarter four, 2023. It ended the year with around $72 million, which was above their guidance for 65 to 70. And they reported top line revenue at the top of its guidance between 160 and 165. So we're going to assume about 165. So that's all very positive. So let's kind of break it down little by little. So cash flow positive. So uh, not, their nine month revenue was about 119 million and they expect it to be 160 to 165. Obviously, if they are at the top of that, we're going to assume that they made $46 million in the fourth quarter of 2023. Uh, for their third quarter, 2023 total costs were $53 million. So maybe there's some cost cutting going on or some other factor, like maybe they got uh, a milestone from Regeneron, but I just can't quite see how they made cash flow positive. Now, this is still it's very good. I'm not going to really put it down. I can't see how they do it. I guess we'll find out in the third quarter, but that definitely looks like, hey, they are still on a very positive track for this. That cash situation. So how, however, let's, let's just look at the negative. Let's say they're just playing with numbers, whatever. If we say that the company is 7 million short with over 70 million plus in the bank, the company is very healthy from a cash flow perspective. We can assume, of course, that means that the company might have 10 plus quarters of cash on hand, which is two and a half years, which would, get them through everything they currently have. So uh, that's going to eliminate the need to raise any funds in the near future. So that is extremely positive. Uh, the company has stated that the total expenses will remain flat for 2024. Uh, again, what's that, what's that mean? Is that we're, that 53 million that we talked about earlier, probably going to stay very close. So really for us, it's getting more sales and not having to worry about like the bloat of the company. So is, if you get more sales, you will hit that. No problem. So what do we talk about when we're looking at the future? So obviously it, the stock price went up with all this news, but you know, what is behind it? So we're currently waiting from a decision from Amgen about the Zero Jet. And we've been waiting since the quarter three, 2023, when we had the successful formulation and that triggered a $6 million bonus. Um, so this deal was originally with Horizon. Amgen bought them. So uh, probably that's why we've been waiting. So we're really still a little bit more of an anticipation for it just because Horizon had a plan. Amgen, we're not sure where they're going to go. Uh, we are working on uh, formulations with Regeneron for two molecules. It started second quarter of 2023. It really was announced like the 30th of March, 2023. So really end of first quarter. So I'm going to say probably the real work began in the second quarter. Um, so again, we were looking at that. I, you know, one of those things that we could be cash even is because of the formulations or when the formulation is going through, we'll see. And then in trial completion and data, the first half is when they expect the trial to complete and the data by mid-year for the Xerosol drug. Uh, this is in phase two. So if that is positive, which I believe it will be, they will most likely start phase three in late 2024, maybe early 2025. It depends on how just, the data itself, how it looked and going from there. So a pretty decently bright future for it, but what could hurt? So obviously I said, I'm going to look at the bullish parts. I'm going to look at the bearish parts. This is definitely going to be the bearish parts of that. So Amgen and Regeneron not move forward with their deals. Uh, obviously they think they had a deal with another company previous to that. They did not move forward. So that is something that could happen. Like, you know, we might get through 2024 with no major deals. It is a possibility. You have to look at that. Uh, we could have continued slow re Korolev growth uptake. So this was supposed to be, you know, really help with the Caveus uh, generic issue. Like, hey, this comes up, that goes down, we're in good shape, and we're still growing. Uh, we have not seen really that just great uptake yet. Now, again, 
Maybe we see that in the fourth quarter and maybe we're, you know, in good shape. We'll see. And then, of course, talking about the Caveus growth killed by generic, there was a generic approved for it last year. The generic hasn't done anything. So I think that Xeris has done a great job protecting their IP. And a lot of that is because of the type of disease that Caveus is treating and just a lot of the support with it. So a lot of times generics kill a product. Sometimes you can fight that off depending on what you're doing. So obviously Caveus is doing it by making a huge like patient care type of thing, working with the patient stuff like that. It's better than, hey, you know what? If you just take a pill and, oh, it's either gonna cost me 100 or 10, you're gonna choose 10. If you now are like, hey, I have this disease, I don't know it. And this company is going to help me uh, go through and understand a lot of it and be a supportive staff compared to a generic, which is just like, here's a pill, take it. It makes a difference. And obviously at the moment it's shown it could, it has made a difference, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to continue forever. So again, we're going to continue to look at that to see what happens. Okay, so that's all the bullish and the bearish. So um, a year ago when I invested and made this recommendation of the stock, we were in the low ones. So if you looked at my video a year ago and you said, you know what, I like what this guy is saying, I'm investing, you are doing really well. So we are currently sitting at 245 with a market cap around 338 million. So I've always looked at following pharma. I see a break even pharma company could be worth around 1 billion in market cap which means I would still recommend buying the stock since I still see plenty of upside at the moment. Now we have three things that we could go wrong. We have two partnerships and we still, or could go right, two partnerships and one drug trial, which I am not hugely high on, but of course, hey, if it provides extra money, I'm not gonna argue with it. So again, I do believe that the $1 billion market cap price is good. Like, I can't see it not being just based on what we have in the pipeline and stuff like that. Now, obviously, stuff could change and it might go down if we don't get any deals or the uh, trial does not succeed, but we'll see. But at the moment, I am still offering a recommend on this stock. So hopefully this helped and hopefully this will at least get you started to look at the company or invest in the company if you want. But thank you very much for listening and watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.